North Korean troops, who are already taking part in battles in the Kursk region, probably will be involved directly in combat operations on the Ukrainian territory occupied by the Russian Federation. This is reported by CNN with reference to one of the Ukrainian commanders. It is reported that soldiers from the DPRK take part in direct combat operations in Kursk region as well as in defensive operations in the neighboring Belgorod region and in the Russian-occupied Ukrainian territories. Basically, the tasks are defined as the second echelon of defense. As for Kursk region, these are combat operations directly. CNN quoted its interlocutor as saying, according to him, there are specialist artillerymen and snipers among the personnel. The Ukrainian commander also told reporters that these groups will be directly involved in combat operations on Ukrainian territory in the near future. There is a high probability of their appearance in the occupied territories of Ukraine as well, the serviceman said. The Ukrainian commander also emphasized that the North Korean military are a significant resource for Russia's war against Ukraine. Those soldiers from the DPRK who will be involved in the defense will allow Russia to redeploy its troops for operations on other parts of the front. Subsequently, they will also be used directly in combat. According to military standards, these are three full-blooded brigades. Thus, the occupants can remove 10,000 soldiers from the second line of defense put soldiers from the DPRK there and send these three brigades to the front line. It is also reported that the Russian Federation has concentrated tens of thousands of people, including North Korean soldiers, to attack Ukrainian positions in Kursk region of the Russian Federation. The US believes the offensive will begin in the coming days. A Ukrainian commander told CNN that North Korean troops were taking part in direct combat operations in Kursk as well as defensive operations in the neighboring Belgorod region of Russia and in Russian-occupied Ukrainian territories. Mostly, the tasks are defined as the second echelon of defense. In the Kursk region, these are direct combat operations, he said, adding that among the personnel were specialist artillerymen and snipers. He said the North Korean troops were a significant resource for Russia's war on Ukraine as even those being deployed defensively would free up Russian troops for assault operations elsewhere and would themselves eventually be used in direct combat. Former Ambassador of Ukraine to Britain, Ex-Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Vadim Pristaiko, believes that Britain is one of the countries that will not leave Ukraine in its fight against Russian invasion. He admitted that the country may agree to deploy its troops in the demilitarized zone between Russia and Ukraine if a decision is made to create such a zone. The diplomat said, said this on Obos Revitel media outlet. This is how he commented on information from the Western media that US President-elect Donald Trump's plan to end the war may involve placing European and British troops in Ukraine in a buffer zone between the armies of both sides. However, as Pristaiko emphasized, Ukraine should adopt a law on the admissions of Allied armed formations to the territory of Ukraine. I want to remind you that our allies differ from Russia in that we have to invite them to our territory. A law is passed for this purpose. It must be passed at least in order to create legal grounds. For example, if the president of France said that he is ready to do this, then let's invite immediately. We heard from the British Prime Minister that they are ready to do this. For example, to send their instructors and we will immediately make a decision. The Verkhovna Rada will vote and invite our friends, our brothers, our allies. This is a normal way, the diplomat said. He is convinced that the partners will support any decision of Ukraine, both if the country wants to continue fighting and if it wants to look for ways to negotiate. If we want to fight and are ready to fight, our friends will help us to fight. If we want and are ready to look for ways of reconciliation, find compromises, we will be helped to look for this way. This is only our decision. We have suffered so much during all this time and that no one has a right except us to accept the decision, added Pristaiko. We will remind that the Telegraph, citing sources close to Trump, writes that the newly elected US president may propose to create a 1,200 kilometer buffer zone, which will be provided by European and British troops to separate the Russian and Ukrainian armies within the framework of the plan to stop the war. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky met Tuesday with newly appointed ambassadors to Kiev from Greece, Albania, Japan, and Egypt. 
The ambassadors officially handed over their credentials to Zelensky and then held separate talks with him. The appointments come one day before the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is expected to hold urgent meetings on Ukraine with NATO and European Union officials following last week's presidential election and the return of Donald Trump to the White House in January. The State Department will hold talks in Brussels on Wednesday on how to boost support for Ukraine as President-elect Trump has suggested U.S. military assistance to the country fighting off Russia's invasion could be severely curtailed after he takes office. Ambassador, my congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, our congratulations for the year from the beginning of his ready, and we are waiting um, for the pleasure for us. Japan has a very important role in this case. signing of this document as close as possible. We Thank you.